Hey guys, in today's video I'm going to provide an updated version of my earlier video where I showed you how to create a loan amortization schedule with additional payments. This works for mortgages, car loans, student loans, any type of loan basically that follows a schedule and allows extra payments along the way. By making extra payments, you'll be able to reduce the term of your loan, meaning you'll become debt free a lot quicker. In this video, I'll be using the free and easy Google Sheets. But if you use Microsoft Excel, you'll be able to do the exact same actions and get the exact same result. Before we get into the video, please make sure to subscribe to my channel down below. I post a lot of content in the personal finance and investing space. Now, let's get into it. So start by opening up either Google Sheets, which is free with your Google or Gmail account, or Microsoft Excel. The first thing you'll want to do is specify all of your information relating to your debt. This includes your loan amount, the interest rate on your debt, the term of your debt in years, and finally, the number of installments you'll pay each year. So let's go through these one by one. Firstly, the loan amount is basically the total money you owe on this individual loan. For example, if you bought a car for $20,000, but you had a $10,000 deposit, your debt amount would be $10,000. So let's include that here. Second, we have the interest rate. This percent represents the annual charge for borrowing the money. This allows the bank or finance provider to earn a return on their money as inflation will erode the value of their money by the time the loan is repaid. Let's use 10% here. Third, we have the term, which represents the amount of time in years before the debt is fully repaid, according to the terms you agreed when you took on the debt. A car loan might be from one to five years, while a mortgage on a house could be as long as 30. In this example, let's assume two years. And finally, we have the installments per term. In other words, how many payments need to be made each year? If you pay weekly, this would be 52. Fortnightly, 26. Monthly, 12 and annual would be one. In our example, let's pay monthly and use the number 12. So now we have the basic information required to make a simple loan schedule. Now, let's start building it out. We now must create the columns needed to make the schedule. These can be in any order. I'll start with the loan balance, the installment, the principal installment, the interest installment, and finally, the additional payment. These will be our headings. Now, one row under, we'll insert a zero, and under loan balance, we'll link this back to our loan amount. What this says is that when the loan starts, we owe $10,000 to our financier. If this is your first formula in Excel or Google Sheets, these are powerful tools used to create links between cells for calculations. The second calculation we'll perform will be in cell A8, called sequence. We use the equal sign, then write the word sequence, and use an open bracket. As you'll see, Google Sheets helps us know the information needed with a pop-up. We're creating rows, so we'll need to multiply the term and the installments per term to get to the total number of rows needed for our loan schedule. You can do this manually as well, but this just saves us a bit of time. So now we have all of our rows. If we click on cell C8, we'll be able to create our third formula using the PMT formula. PMT is a simple formula that calculates the installment amount required to pay off the loan by a certain time. In our case, we want to know what installment amount allows us to completely pay off the $10,000 debt by the 24th month. So if we press the equal sign and then type PMT and use an open bracket, Again, we are guided by Google Sheets on the information required. Starting with the rate, we need to take our annual rate of 10% and then divide this by the installments per term. This turns the annual interest rate into monthly. Using a comma, we must now specify the number of installments we'll make in total over the term of the loan. In our case, this will require us to multiply two years by 12 months to get 24 months in total. Now, we're up to the present value which is basically our loan amount. We need to first use a minus sign and then select the loan amount of $10,000. Moving along, the future value allows us to specify a loan balloon. In our case, we aren't currently using one, so this isn't required, so just put a zero. And finally, end or beginning is used to specify whether your loan is paid in advance or arrears. Most loans will be paid in arrears, while leases are commonly in advance. For our purposes, just use a zero to acknowledge that this is a payment in arrears. Then you can close the bracket and press enter. Now we have a value of $461.45, which will be our minimum required monthly installment, but we aren't done yet. Click back into the formula and make sure to lock a few cells. What this means is that when we drag our formulas down, the cell references don't move with it. To lock these cells, you can either click into the cell references and press the F4 button or type in a dollar sign manually before the letter and before the number. For this formula, we must lock every single cell. And finally, to the end of this formula, add a plus sign and click on the cell F8. This allows the installment to increase in the case we make an additional lump sum payment alongside the regular installment. Now, move over to cell E8 and use an equal sign. Now we must calculate the interest portion of our first installment. An installment has two parts, both 
the interest and the principal. The interest is a charge for borrowing the money, while the principal represents the actual amount you're paying off the loan with every single instalment. So to do this, you need to select cell B7, the current loan balance, and multiply this by the monthly interest rate. This is the annual interest rate divided by the instalments per term. Then you can close the brackets and press enter. If we format this as a dollar amount, you can see $83 of our $461 instalment is purely an interest charge. Now we need to lock two cell references, both to the interest rate and the instalments per term, just as we did before. We don't lock the reference to the loan balance as we need this to change with each instalment throughout the loan. Now move across to cell D8 and we'll specify the principal portion of the instalment. As I mentioned earlier, the instalment is both principal and interest simply added together. So we can subtract the interest from the instalment here. What we are left with is the amount the loan balance will reduce by with every payment we make. So in cell B4, we subtract this from the $10,000 loan balance. So now we've created the first line of our loan schedule. After the first payment, the loan balance reduces to $9,622. To complete the loan balance, all we need to do is with our mouse, select the cells from B8 to E8. Release the click and then select the circle or square in the case of Excel at the bottom right of the selection. Holding down the click, drag it down to row 31 and then release the click. The numbers will now load all the way down and as you can see, the loan balance turns to zero with the final installment in month 24. Once we've formatted these nicely as financial figures, that summarizes the steps to create a simple loan schedule. If we start to add additional payments, however, you'll see the balance goes negative, showing we aren't done just yet for the special schedule we're creating today. If you go to cell C8, we need to add some additional details here. Start by copying the entire formula here and we'll add an if statement so we can tidy this up. At the start of the formula, after the equal sign, type if and an open bracket. Now we'll be seeing new guidelines appear. We must start with a piece of logic and if the answer is true, the second item will be calculated. If, however, it comes out false, the third item will be calculated. So the formula allows us to create a condition. In our case, if the formula we created earlier, minus the interest amount, is greater than the loan balance at the previous instalment, then the instalment must instead be the loan balance plus our extra payment plus the installment interest. Using a comma, we then must paste our formula so that the usual calculation is performed. Then press the enter button. Copy the cell this time and paste it through the entire column so they all get the formula. Now you'll see there are some changes to the bottom of the schedule. Because we made a $1,000 extra payment after a month, the 22nd month has a loan installment lower than the others. This is because the extra payment shortened the length of the loan and it will only take 22 months to pay off now instead of the 24. We can see the full impact of this by doing a calculation to see how much interest was saved by making the lump sum payment. At the top of the page, type total interest paid. In the next cell, type an equal sign, then sum and an open bracket. Then click at the top of column E, close the bracket and press the enter key. If we turn this into a dollar figure, we can see the loan with an extra payment will cost us a total of $872 in interest costs. Remember this figure. If we then were to remove the extra payment we've made, you can see this number increases to $1,074. This is approximately $200 higher than what we would have paid in interest if the extra payment was not made. So the conclusion here is the more often or earlier you make additional payments beyond your contracted loan installments, you'll not only pay your debt off sooner, but you'll save a lot in interest costs as well. So that summarizes how to create a simple loan amortization schedule with additional lump sum payments. If you want to take it one level higher, we can create a model that adapts as we change the loan variables. For example, we might later decide to pay fortnightly, requiring the installments per term to increase to 26. As you can see, the loan schedule didn't like that and it isn't long enough. To solve this, we need to once again drag our cells to the bottom to installment number 52. The loan balance again restores to zero. As a side note, if you look at the top of the page, you'll see the total interest costs reduce from $1,074 to $1,052. If you make more regular installments, such as changing from monthly to weekly, you'll be charged less interest as your loan balance is dropping quicker than if you paid monthly, for example. So the model all looks pretty good and works the other way too if we were to reduce the loan term from two years to just one. As we borrowed the $10,000 for just one year instead of two, our interest cost has halved. If you found this video helpful, please make sure to subscribe to my channel down below. Also make sure to leave a comment if there are any other financial calculations or topics you'd like for me to cover in future videos. Thanks for watching and I look forward to catching you on the next one.